Welcome to Camping with Steve. Today we're in the city of Lethbridge. Beautiful weather here, a lot warmer than what we had in Edmonton and area. And we're gonna go do some stealth camping. New city, I have not really been here. I've been here once. So I've looked around to see if I can find a spot to stealth camp and it's a little tricky, but I found a spot that should do. Time for new shoes, or some shoe glue or something. These have done a good job, but I guess they just couldn't handle any more camping. There's lots of spots along the river, and it looks like they'd be awesome if there was some foliage on these cottonwoods. But there isn't, so we're gonna have to go a little farther into the woods. Well, there's this uh, kind of mixed-use trail, mostly for, looks like, mountain biking. Nice little swimming hole that you can't swim in. And I'm gonna have to get off the beaten trail here. I gotta be careful, because there can be rattlers around here. Um, bit early in the season to see them. I've heard April is the time you start to worry. But I'll keep an eye out, particularly since one of my shoes lost all the tread off of it. Gotta tread carefully for a couple of reasons. an old survey marker there which might be where the technical high water line comes up to uh, for the river and I haven't seen any private property signs but there are some buildings up there certainly major road there I I do believe we're still in the park though hope and these bushes up there yeah, that looks just about right made it into a series of game trails here. I shouldn't have to worry about bears because this isn't their biome of choice. This is kind of arid, uh, not true desert, but getting there. Uh, lots of deer around though, I know that. I've seen them in the city itself. So. Oh, yeah. This spot I think will do perfectly the exact clearing I was looking for. And I know there's probably a lot of deer that hang around here, but I don't think it'll cause me too much of a problem. Uh, very warm today. At 14 Celsius, which I think is 57 or so Fahrenheit. Uh, if Google was telling the truth when I Googled it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to set up a cot here, kind of make it uh, camping under the stars, but I have a little bit of a camel blind that I'll put up just in case there's anybody further out in the trails that would see all the neon blue sleeping equipment and stuff. just fine out here under the stars. Um, I don't see any footprints really in this part of the park. I could see maybe dogs running around off leash in the morning from dog walkers, but this park is pretty much off the beaten path. I don't see any signs of people around here other than that one empty, which will be coming uh, with me on the way out of here along with a bunch more. And uh, yeah, this is, this is awesome. So I'll, I'll try and drape up my little camouflage uh, camo netting thing to see how that works. I find some of the best stealth camping stuff you can find 
is in the hunting department and not in the camping department. And uh, it's just, hunters know how to hide and they know how to do it usually in comfort and style. So, years of technology being invested into hunting blinds have resulted in this wonderful thing. This is the most, uh, the most appropriate to the uh, surroundings I could find, but you get the idea. Okay, I think this hides me pretty good because the only trail is kind of way back on that side. There's nothing behind me other than more woods, more woods, more woods. So nobody should be able to see all the stuff I got behind here. Uh, caught. Backpack. And it's all just hidden away. So yeah, I can chill out behind here and I don't think people are ever gonna see me. Okay, the hard work is all done. Time for a step two. I don't even know where this is made. It's called OT Brewing Company, but I like the name of it. Bush League Pilsner, because I'm out in the bush today. And where is it made? Of course, I'm colorblind and I can't read the red on. Oh, Calgary. There we go. Fairly local. That hiking shook it up. It's hoppy. Um, good and hoppy. It's the extent of my beer knowledge. <laughs> I'm gonna get into the gear that I picked up today. Uh, I was working with what I could find in Lethbridge because I like to support local when I can if I'm out in different cities. And also, um, I didn't want to break the bank with anything. I picked this up from Atmosphere. It's a Marmot Nano Wave 25 degree. Um, somebody's walking around out there. Just lay low for a sec here. seems that the hikers have hiked on through. So, I'm just gonna go over the gear I picked up today. It's a Nanowave Marmot. Got it from Atmosphere, I believe. I like to support local when I'm camping in these towns. And actually the price was not bad. I think it was $130 on sale or something. Claims to be good down to, well, they say 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then they have a limit here of 28.6 Fahrenheit. So I'm not sure what's going on. Minus two Celsius. Do I believe that? No. Uh, which is why I've got a bag liner um, Sea to Summit. Uh, just a, if it gives me one more degree, I'll be happy. So get this thing puffing up. I read the reviews on it, of course, after I bought it because I started to panic and thought I'd bought something dumb. But uh, it's, it's not discreet, but it's also not neon yellow so that's that's a good thing I tend to sleep a little warmer than most as well so we'll see what it does but it packs up so nice and small the other one uh, that big yellow one took up my entire backpack so any winter camping I pretty much had to bring two backpacks and it really uh, really stuck out quite obvious but uh, yeah let this loft up I'll give you a full report on this in the morning. Rest of the sleeping system, got this little uh, climate static V2 air mattress uh, sleeping pad thing. Uh, it's small and I really treated myself to some smaller lightweight gear. I normally just have the big stuff with me, but it makes a lot more stealth camping situations pretty impossible. If I'm just uh, bringing one backpack like this, it's obvious enough as it is without bedrolls tied onto it and water canisters and everything. So, um, yeah, new gear day. And again, you know, 
I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm sponsored by people who have donated to the Beer Donation Fund and Gear Donation Fund and Bale Donation Fund because uh, a lot of people want to see me out here um, trying stealthy things and this certainly makes it possible. So anyhow, um, it doesn't have a self-inflating bag included with it and I know you're not supposed to inhale directly into it because it'll get condensation inside but that's what we're gonna have to do today. Oh, aha. If you wouldn't know it, I heard a little rustle in the bush and it was a grouse. So, where there's one, there's sure to be more. Even just a few feet away here from where I'm set up, it's not overly conspicuous, aside from the sunglasses hanging up on the tree there. And yeah, a green sleeping bag would be much, much better, but I think this is miles better than how I normally stealth. Got to get a few more of these, uh, these camo cloths. It's awesome. I haven't seen our little grouse friend in a bit. I think I spooked him off. But Canada geese are returning, so that's a sign of spring, which is really nice to see. And of course, there's always something we need to be aware of or deal with when we're camping. Whether it's bear season in bear country, whether it's minus 30, um, whether we're hiding from park rangers, there's always something. And this week is ticks. So I got my jeans tucked into my socks. And if I'm walking through the tall grass or the bushes, I want to have long sleeves on. Um, when I hiked out here, my arms got sweaty because I'm not used to hiking in the sun. So I got this kind of turned inside out, drying out before it gets cold enough that I have to put the jacket back on. And that's what I'll be using for tick protection. And I got a pair of tweezers with me in case one does land on me and just yank it right off. And uh, yeah, there shouldn't be a problem. There are ticks around here. The place is not infested with ticks, but they, they are out here, and um, diseases are rare with these ones in this area. You know, they, they can carry disease, but it's it's not that common out here. But it's still good to be cautious. That and the rattlers. So, what I read online for the City of Lethbridge information was starting in April to be concerned. And we're just the beginning of March right now, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. But I still keep an eye where I'm stepping, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's really cooling off now that the sun has dipped behind the hill over there. <sighs> Just about to see my breath. Um, so I'm gonna get the sleeping system set up. I haven't used it yet, so it's always good to do it before it's too dark. And I'll probably try to fit this inside of the sleeping bag, uh, the pad inside of the sleeping bag. Um, a subscriber let me know about that trick. Actually, that's not going to work at all. This is a full width sleeping pad, so I'll blow that up, uh, get the sleeping bag in there, and then we'll start cooking some food before it gets too dark. I haven't heard anybody else on the trails for a little bit, because uh, they're probably at home cooking supper uh, like normal people instead of doing it in the woods uh, hidden behind a camo cloth. I'm really hoping this is going to be warmer than it looks like it will. <laughs> yeah, the big yellow one was uh, big yellow one was a little chilly sometimes, even around these temperatures. And this is much much smaller. I discovered some more writing on the bag here. It shows me. Uh, yeah. There's a comfort rating of uh, 38. 0.1 Fahrenheit, 3.4 Celsius, a limit, which I guess is what men are supposed to go by is the <laughs> limit, and that one is uh, 28.6 Fahrenheit or minus 1.9 Celsius, and the extreme being just below zero Fahrenheit or minus 18 Celsius. Uh, 
I would not attempt that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yes. Oh, I've also got bear spray here in case there is some larger animals lurking around in the woods. And we pray there won't be. Can't have a fire here because there were signs all over the place that said, don't light a fire. There's clearly dry grass and brush everywhere. So we'll just uh, chill here, finish off this beverage, and then uh, start to cook the meal. Picked up a little cook set. This actually, uh, the whole thing fits in here. Um, GSI Outdoors. Picked it up from that, uh, what's that store? Um, Atmosphere. It's a camping brand of Canadian Tire, I guess. And inside of this thing, I got the uh, fuel for it. I got the little tiny stove. This is an MSR, pretty light one. Spork, um, which is good uh, for just about everything. And uh, even a little drinking cup and cook right on that. So, it takes up a lot less space, which is the name of the game. I'm trying to keep things, particularly with the stealth camping, uh, as minimal as possible without going with extreme backpacking mountain type gear. So, um, it almost fits everything and closes perfectly, but closes good enough for me. Holy moly. Okay. I wouldn't want to try to simmer with this stove. It looks uh, it looks pretty aggressive as far as cooking something. I do have to give a big shout out to people who have donated for the beer fund, which has brought us Bush League Pilsner. Uh, great beer for in the bush on Bush League Camping Channel. And uh, it also helps with all the gear, uh, the gas, and, and all these other great things. I also have to give a big shout out to Aiden, uh, who is eight in Nebraska, I believe. Uh, father reached out to me and told me you're a big fan of the channel. Now, I don't always give a big shout out during uh, the video, but occasionally I do. And I think, uh, Aiden, if you can, uh, get out and enjoy the outdoors with your dad, he'd be very happy and uh, I would be too. So, that will boil up and we're gonna be um, hunkering down in no time whatsoever. Yeah, we're to boil pretty much, so I'm gonna dump in the, uh, the shells. And yeah, there's the ready-made sauce that comes with this. And I'll actually heat this up in the water as well before I drain this out. And the nice thing is with this lid, it comes with uh, a pouring nozzle angle there, but also a straining, a straining perforation on the one side. So yeah, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, there we go. Down to a nice rolling boil. Well, cheese sauce, I'm just gonna warm up in the pot a little bit with the boiling uh, shell pasta. And uh, it's so nice because I don't have to add butter or milk or anything like that. It just comes right out of the bag, ready to go. Stir it all up. 
here we go. The first time taste testing Annie's 70% organic cheesy shells. It's good. Not even 10 o'clock. I'm gonna try and crawl into this thing because there's frost growing on the <laughs> side of my uh, cot here. So hopefully this thing will be proving to be warmer than I think it is. So I'll crawl into this somehow. Oh boy. Okay. So far, better than being outside. And uh, yes, I'm leaving my jacket on. I don't think there's any danger of perspiration. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. A lot of people say strip right down to your skivvies before you get to bed, but I can't do that for a number of reasons. One, I'm on camera. And two, I kind of bring the bare minimum um, sleeping gear. I, I, I tried uh, no jacket the last time I was out, but pretty much uh, I had to put the jacket back on in order to get through the night in that culvert. Anyway. See you guys in the morning. I can feel it already. This will be a cold night. Uh, sun's not quite up yet, but speaking of Starlink, it just flew over top of me, a big, uh, big cluster. Yeah, it's been a pretty chilly night, but, uh, wow, that was kind of cool to see. A little Starlink train going, going by right overhead. Uh, yeah, the sun should be up in about an hour or so, um, and then things will start to warm up. Uh, but anyway, I was just watching the sky, and then I saw that shoot past, so that was kind of neat. Good morning, it's a frosty one. Um, according to the uh, internet, it got down to minus three here last night. I'm guessing a little colder where I am because I'm down in the river valley here. Uh, the sun is actually up, but I'm down in the river valley, so I can just see it hitting the tops of the trees. Time for me to get up and uh, start packing up, make maybe a little food, if it's not too frozen and uh, climb up into the sunshine where I can warm up a bit. So glad I had this sleeping bag liner. Uh, without it, it would have been pretty unbearable. And uh, I have to admit, before I looked at the temperature and saw how frosty it was when I got out of bed, I was uh, pretty disappointed with the performance of this sleeping bag. However, um, now that I'm actually out of bed, uh, this thing did pretty good, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I think it's a lot colder where I am than the actual temperature, which says minus 3 Celsius, which would be 20-something Fahrenheit. Um, just because we're in such a low spot, out of the sun, close to the river. So, um, yeah, this sleeping bag going to do just fine in the summertime. That's what I was expecting. That's how things go back into the bag. They come in normally. Oops. 
My water's a little chunky this morning. Uh, I normally try to take it into the sleeping bag with me, but uh, I didn't do that. I trusted the weather forecast last night. I really love this thing. I'm gonna get a couple more of these. Uh, it's about $30 Canadian for this. And it's made out of that stuff like uh, one of those J cloths for doing dishes is made out of. Uh, seems to be fairly durable. Doesn't reflect light. Doesn't, uh, it's not shiny. It doesn't ruffle in the wind. Uh, won't keep the water off you, but uh, For what it is, it's pretty sweet, I think. Oh yeah, it packs up real nice. Unlike a plastic poly tarp. All packed up, leave no trace. We are out of here. Ah, oh, yeah. Sunglasses are so frosty. Can't even wear them. Here's this culprit. Ugh. Somebody's littering. <sighs> littering and drinking light beer. Unreal. Okay. Out of the woods. And uh, yeah, beautiful day. Just about to the footbridge where I get to conquer my fear of heights all over again. But uh, the footbridge is nothing compared to that huge train trestle in the distance there. Yikes, that would be uh, that would be my nightmare to try and walk across that thing. But uh, yeah, I figured I'm going to address why I started saying hunker down so much. I don't know if I've ever brought that up. Um, during the days when I was living in the RV, uh, working odd jobs, trying to save money, and I guess hunker down was the phrase for a really simple night of not drinking, you know, having root beer or something, and simple foods, watching movies, and saving money. It was like, just gonna hunker down and save some money this week. And uh, it just became a part of my vocabulary. Then I'd said it in, uh, in a video um, a couple of times, I think probably three or four times in one video, uh, when I was sleeping in the back of my pickup truck at the Walmart parking lot. And people kept commenting, say hunker down one more time, I dare ya. <laughs> and I was bugging some people, so and then I made it a catchphrase. So. Uh, so there, <laughs> and yeah, okay, I can do this, it's just a bridge. Just doing uh, some dishes here and then I'll try to cook up a little uh, frozen breakfast sandwich. Uh, I'd plan to do it in here, but it uh, looks like it'll be tricky to get it in and out and flip it back and forth so um, yeah just waiting here for beautiful wife she'll be here probably within half an hour or so well the only way to actually cook this uh, is to steam it in its own foil well I kind of thought it um, mm. okay I'll choke that down in a bit but beautiful wife and I are on a little bit of a trip here for the next two to three weeks all around kind of southern Alberta we're gonna do a couple of normal camping trips maybe three and then we're gonna sprinkle in some stealth camping uh, so if you know a good spot or you'd like to see uh, your community featured in a stealth camp um, please let me know in the comments um, yeah beautiful wife is on the way I just got a message from her so I should see her shortly, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait to uh, 
cannot wait to get into a nice warm car. <laughs> the sun is nice and warm, but uh, I still got a bit of a chill from last night. Beautiful wife has pulled up, and I've never been more happy to get into a nice warm vehicle. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, um, please consider subscribing. And uh, stay tuned for what we're going to be doing here in the next week. I apologize to people who have sent emails that I haven't gotten back to on time. Um, there's 42,000 in my inbox right now, and uh, yeah, I got a mean one from Russ. So I'm sorry, uh, sorry I couldn't get back to you sooner, and I didn't mean to be hurtful to you or anybody else that has sent an email. But I, uh, I have hired somebody that will be starting to organize messages so that I can get to them more easily. But, uh, oh boy, puddles to walk through here. Yeah, if I, if I just answered comments, I'd never get a video filmed. Cheers, guys. We'll see you uh, next week.